heading to the Negev epic day we have no idea what's in store but we've had our coffee and we're in the car and all is good peace from the Holy Land Okay folks, we've just pulled off the highway. We're gonna do something special, which you actually only see this time of the year. So it's taking us a little bit on a four by four track here. Perfect, let's have a stop. Good morning, Shmuel, the running tour guide, together with Dr. Tovia Book. What a journey today. The ideal time to learn about what you see here. This is what you call a liman. Now, what is a liman? In brief, all along the highway, the Jewish National Fund have built these little catchment systems and what it really does is by building up a barrier it catches the runoff water from the main roads and it puts them into these little reservoirs and they plant trees so this is one way to green the desert you know we're in a landscape that requires man to work the land in order to bring out the green and in this pool you can see all of the tamarisk trees and uh, this is actually an indigenous tree called the Eshel, Eshel Abraham, which is the tree where Abraham would have welcomed the angels into the tent. And of course, this is the tromping ground of Abraham Avinu. Am I right in saying this? Yes, in fact, Eshel, they say in Hebrew, stands for Ochel Shtia Lina. Food, hospitality, drink, also hospitality, and Lina, uh, sleeping in the tent as well. So the Eshel was a classic tree of Abraham where he welcomed the angels into his tent so they could eat, drink, and have sleep as well. Hachnasat Ochim, to welcome the guests, the supreme value in Judaism. We're heading further south. We're heading in the direction of Mitzperamon. The sun is still rising. It's crisp, it's cool. Stick with us. Please subscribe, follow the channel. There's lots more coming. Okay, folks, that is not a UFO. That is clean, green technology. Solar power in the desert. You can see the mirrors that surround the tower directing the sun's light to the peak. It's like the clouds of glory in the desert. That tower is a power tower. Israel, startup nation, a light unto the nations, making it a better place. That's the aim. It's not just morals, it's technology too. We export a whole lot of things. Welcome to the promised land. Okay, folks, we just have to go a little bit off the way here and see an incredible sight on the southern biblical border of Israel. Nachal Sin, check this out. southern biblical border of the Holy Land and here you have wild goats, the ibex, that have been here from the beginning of time. These are called the Ya'elim and they're mentioned uh, in the book of Shmuel, the Ya'elim, the Goa and Engedi, they go as far down as the Negev and they are the symbol of the Israel National Parks Association it's a symbol of success. They were almost extinct at the turn of the 20th century and the state of Israel has brought them back and now they are back in their original habitat where they belong. Yes, yeah, so there you can see the alpha male. Now he will mate with almost all of the females. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. And this is why it's called a typical breeding herd. It's so well camouflaged in this desert landscape. Now you may not even notice them when I turn. What a scene. But to feel this desert, to experience this landscape, to see its nature is a uh, part and parcel of the blessing of being able to go around the promised land so i hope you're enjoying these scenes that we can share with you please remember to subscribe to the channel and when you do come and visit we'd be happy to take you around bringing it to you thank you for following
you wouldn't believe that this is the Negev. Now let's take the outside lane, coming to the end of the trail and to the edge of the cliff. A very unexpected sight coming up. I don't know if you've ever been here, but have a look. It's the last thing you'd expect, but in the middle of this beautiful view, which we're about to see, there are two graves. One of David Ben-Gurion and his wife, Paula Ben-Gurion, uh, next to him, and that's it. So you wonder why they're here, when well, most prime ministers of Israel, in fact, almost all of them, are buried on Mount Herzl in Jerusalem. David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, uh, requested that he be buried right here in the Negev desert. So one would wonder why. You'd also wonder why David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, who had so many things to brag about, to be proud about, only wrote one thing on his grave marker. This is the guy that founded the State of Israel. This is the guy that is Israel's first defense minister. He was a leader of the issue of the pre-state Jewish community before the State of Israel. He led the State of Israel for many years in war and in peace. He has a huge amount of achievements, yet if we look on his grave, there's only one major achievement listed there. Let's have a look and see what it says. So it says, David Ben-Gurion, 1886 to 1973, and the only, the greatest achievement was the last line, Allah Outza Betaf Resh Samech Vav, 1906. All he wrote on his grave was the date that he made Aliyah, the date that he moved to Israel, he came up to live in Israel, because that changed the trajectory of his entire life. As a famous poet Robert Frost said, he took the road less traveled and coming back home to Israel and rejoining his Jewish roots changed his entire life. And for him, that was his greatest achievement. And when he died, he said, rather than be buried in Jerusalem, I want to be buried with my wife in the Negev desert so people will come down and see exactly what the Jews have achieved. Now, he might not have been a religiously observant man, but he was raised in a religious home and he felt the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible for him, was the Jewish, key Jewish book of our return. And he was inspired by the prophets, Zechariah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them prophesied when the children of Israel would come back to the land, the desert would once again bloom. Desert and wasteland shall rejoice over them and the plain shall rejoice and shall blossom like a rose. We're now heading further south in the direction of Mitzbe Ramon. We are hoping, we're trusting, the good Lord above will provide us with a flash flood and see some energy and turbulence and life and blessing in the land. Let's go. Lovely atmosphere here with people walking to the site, enjoying the gardens, enjoying the views. One of my favorite spots in the land. Stable care. What does that mean, Dr. Book? Stable care. Fields of cattle, which is quite incredible when you think that this was literally just desert and all these trees and all this green has all come about since the Jews returned to their land where we belong. How's that for a sight? Saying the Hallel, the prayer of thanksgiving that we sing every morning on the festival days of Hanukkah, today being the seventh day of Hanukkah. Okay, folks, we're up riding here. We've come down into the bottom of Mitzvah Ramon. I just want to show you some of these colored rocks. Stunning, stunning terrain. Check it out. Okay, folks, this is part of what we do. Dr. Book has taken us off the main drag. We've done a beautiful Jeep ride, and here we are in the Ramon stream at the bottom of Machtesh Ramon, the Ramon crater. Not really a crater, it's a Machtesh, very unique. Tell us a little bit about a Machtesh. What's it about? Why do we call it a Machtesh, and why do we not call it a, a crater? So Machtesh in English is Machtesh. It's a unique phenomena that we only find in the land of Israel and in the Sinai Peninsula. And there's only three in Israel, the small crater, the big crater, and where we are right now, the Ramon crater. It is so big that it can actually be seen from a satellite picture. You see it in the shape of a heart. 
And basically what happened is there was a hard crust that was eroded by water over tens of thousands of years and it exposed the way the world once looked millions of years ago. If you drive through this crater, you see beautiful, beautiful colored rocks and minerals. You see walls full of ammonite fossils and extinct volcanoes and no end of wonderful geological phenomena to such an extent that people literally come from all over the world to get the snapshot of the way the world once looked. So here we are folks in that stream, Ramon stream, one stream created this entire formation that we're in because it ate those inner layers, the hard crust above came crashing down and this is the reason it exposes these beautiful layers of history and uh, geology. If you're a geologist, this is the prime place to come In and check fact, it out. If you're a geologist, this place rocks. <laughs> this is true. So anyway, look where the Dr. Book has brought us with the 4x4. But here we can see some of the beauty in the bottom of the stream. And also just the beauty of the quietness of the desert. But uh, you want to see some of the colors? Let's go and check out those colors. So the closer you get, you can just see these different colors. You've got the yellows. You can choose what color you want. Look how soft it is. Here's the yellow color. Let's get a little bit of the rouge. Have a look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, the plan is now to get to the cliffs that overlook the crater and we'll show you the beauty from above. Okay, we have to do a little bit of a check here. Uh, we've reached a problem on our route. It's a little bit muddy and wet from the flash flood, so we're just gonna check whether it's possible to get through here. Yeah, I think we can give it a shot. Okay, let's do it. Okay, we're up at the peaks, Spiel Hab Salim, the trail of the sculptures. We'll show you one or two en route, but for now, get ready for the view. Bike paths, runners' paths, walkers' paths, anybody's paths. See a beautiful trail all along the edge here. And then you have these sculptures. Let's have a quick look at this one. Interesting, looks like a keyhole. Opening up the desert. Have a look at this. A brand new viewpoint. An observation deck. Wow. Stunning. Right from the bottom now to the peaks and uh, you can get a glimpse of where we were. Right over there with our bridges. Right over there in the center of this heart shaped Machtesh. Stunning place to come and visit. So we've come here for two reasons. One to show you the view to get to the colored sands. We were hoping for flash floods but ain't our day but what are we going to do yet. now yet exactly never give up on that hope we are heading to Ain Abdat we're going to take a 4 by 4 trail there and we'll do a little runabout in beautiful biblical terrain nice